Hello everyone and welcome back to Inktoberfest. This is Carrie Vanoy and today I'm going to talk to you about how to use reinkers on a gel press. I have this gel press here. This is just a six by six inch gel press. I also have some reinkers in my favorite colors. These are some of the brand new inks from Maker Forte. I have Coral Keys, Hyde Park, and Tartan Teal. And then some of my other favorites in the neon inks as well as uh, some greens and blues here. And we're going to use most of these today for our projects. I'm going to be making two tags that you can recreate and put on your, your ring of tags. So hopefully you have your tags ready and your gel plate ready. One other thing you're going to need is a brayer. I have this brand new mini brayer here that I really like because it has these little feet on the bottom so you can turn it upside down and put it on your surface and the brayer itself doesn't actually touch your surface. I also have my tried and true brayer here that I use all the time. This one's a little bigger, so I'm going to be using this size today. So I wanted to start out by showing you the difference of using an ink pad versus a re-inker. And I think this will clear up a lot of questions. I love using re-inkers because they are very, very vibrant. The, the color is so concentrated. But to show you what it looks like using the ink pads, I'm gonna start out with the exact same colors that I'm gonna use in the re-inkers. So these ink pad colors are Pop Art, Acid Wash, and Purple Rain some of my favorites. So I just put them onto the gel press and now I am spreading out the color with my brayer. It's very difficult to see the color here. It doesn't even look like I have hardly any color on the gel press in this video, but I promise you it is on there. And I'm gonna make a pool on just some regular computer paper to show you the color. Now it's very, very light. It's even lighter in the video than it is in real life. But this is, gives you a really light color on your paper. Let's try it with the reinkers now. I'm using the exact same three colors. This is Pop Art, one of my favorites by the way. I love Pop Art. It's kind of a greenish blue color. It's it's really pretty. Then we've got Acid Wash, which is a really great blue, and the last color is the Purple Rain. You don't need a lot of these reinkers when you're doing this technique. In fact, I could have used less. I'm gonna use less the next time. But for purposes of showing you how it works on the gel press, I'm just gonna place these colors on and then I'm gonna spread them out with my brayer. Now, I had to move those bottles out of the way before I could get this to work. So I'm spreading it out with my brayer and you're gonna see that the faster you work, the more smooth of an image you're gonna get on your paper. So do you see how it's kind of pulling up on the gel press here. I wiped away a little bit of that green and blue color. Now I'm going to brayer on the purple, but see how it's kind of pulling up. I'm going to show you what you can do to fix that a little bit as well, but I wanted to show you at first what happens and what it looks like when you get when you when you do it for the first time just like this with no additional help. Just the ink reinkers. Look at that. Do you see all the design you get and the color? It's so bright compared to this first one. See, look at that. The, the difference is like, wow, so bright, so vivid, so beautiful, and you get a really cool design to top it all off. I think that's a bonus. But if you don't want it to be that splotchy, then try this trick here. Use some clear sticky ink. I'm using VersaFine here. Place it all over your gel plate. Add your ink again with the reinkers, and then brayer it out like normal and watch, you're gonna get a little smoother of a result. So it just depends on the result you're going for and the look you want. That's one thing I love about gel press is you can get a lot of different looks depending on how you do it, what technique you use, how fast you are at it. <laughs> Because like if you do this very quickly and you make a pull just right now, you're going to get a very smooth result. 
See how I'm letting it sit just a little bit? So I did get still a few of those designs and splotches in there. I actually think that's beautiful. So, but the, the clear sticky ink did help so that the splotches weren't as big. Now, another thing that you can do is take any stencil that you have. I'm gonna use this one here from Maker Forte. This is a spotlight stencil and I love it with that drink on there. So place that on and I didn't add any more ink. You saw that I just spread it out. Now I'm adding that stencil on top and I'm pulling that way. And look at this beautiful result that you get. And see how it's softer, the ink is softer around the edges on this one? That's because I spread it out the second time and I did this pretty quickly. Now I'll pull that up using my tweezers here and now I'm gonna make another pull and you're gonna see you get a different result. This time it's more of a ghosted image. So there's two different ways you can do that. I'm just gonna clean off my gel plate here. I spritzed it with a little bit of water and I used my microfiber to wipe it clean so that I can move on to some different colors. And now we're ready to start making our tags so that we have a record of these techniques for our tag book. I'm adding the coral, uh, the coral keys, the Hyde Park, and the Tartan Teal to this one. I'm gonna spread that out. Now this formulation is a little bit different than those bright neon inks. So these inks are a little bit, well, I think in my opinion, they're, they're a little more liquidy, not as thick. So I'm gonna spread that out very quickly, pull that just to see what I get and look at that beautiful design. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more and start on the tags. So I'm just doing the same thing. I just wanted to test these colors, make sure they were gonna work well together. And keep in mind that they will look a little bit different on your tags because the tags are a manila color instead of white. So the color's gonna show differently. And that's okay. Here we go, so I have the tags right here. I'm going to, this first one I'm going to use a slimline stencil because it's perfect for the size of tag. So I'm gonna use that on the first pull and look at the beautiful result you get from that. Now you can use that ink left over on the stencil, just spritz it a little, add it to a card front, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the second pull on the back of this tag so you can see the difference that you get on the second one. Once you remove the stencil, you're gonna get a different look. It's so pretty. So let's go ahead and make our second tag now, our second and our final tag. I'm gonna be using these, these colors that I love, the green, the blue, and the purple. And this time I'm going to just show how, without using a stencil, how you can get different designs with your ink. And I'm gonna do this on the tag so that I can remember, depending on the technique that you use and how fast and quickly you get it done, you can get different looks. So for this one, I am spreading those smooth with my brayer, letting it sit for just a few seconds there so that it beads up just a little bit. Press that onto my tag. When you pull it up, you get a beautiful beaded background. So gorgeous, even without a stencil. I just think that's a really great design for a background of a card, or I'm gonna show you one other use for it in just a minute. Now I'm gonna spread this out to smooth out those colors that are still on the gel press. I'm not re-inking at all, there's still plenty of color here. And I'm gonna pull the back side of this tag so that we can see how nice and smooth you can get the color as well when you spread it out the second time and pull it quicker. So I'm just gonna add the other side there so I get an interesting look and design so the way you pull it and how you put it on your position on your paper, you're gonna get a different look. And to remind me that this beaded, beautiful one that we got at the, front, at the first is also great for die cutting images, die cutting letters. I die cut just some letters here to spell out the word hugs and I'm making a shadow with some black cardstock to really make it pop off the background and then I'm going to put this on that tag 
on that that side that we did the smoother background so that you can see if you do a smoother background you can also add a beautiful die cut with your design at the beginning I'm lining those letters up I'm going to take some mint tape here and pick all of those letters up at the same time so that I can glue down that whole sentiment at once and I'll just leave that on there to dry for just a minute before taking the tape off and there you have your beautiful design and here's the one with the stencil where you get the the first stencil and also the second side there is the one with the smoother look versus the more splotchy look so lots of things you can do plenty of opportunities to die cut this more for more designs and look at all the other fun designs we got from even just cleaning our brayer and pulling some other designs I think this one will look really pretty on a tag too so that one I love that technique so if you want to do the stencil technique there for your tag we still have plenty of designs and beautiful things I hope you enjoyed this quick video today showing you how to use reinkers on a gel press and some different techniques with stencils and smoothing it out and using a clear sticky ink to make it a little less splotchy as well if you did enjoy this video please give me a thumbs up and come on over and visit me at my youtube channel website and instagram i'd love to see you there as well be sure to check the maker forte instagram all month long for giveaways and fun ideas as well thanks for stopping by today we'll see you next time Bye bye